she feel? A little relieved, but she's just super like quiet, just to kind of uh, like. So can we ask her why she's in the hall? Yeah. She didn't want to be around anybody else. So it was her choice. Yeah. Okay. So I asked her if she'd like to go for a walk with us. Yes, she would. And is there some nature nearby? Yes. There's some trees? Yes. All right, let's take her out there. Kept to herself. What would you like to say to her right now? That it's okay. Yeah. That what's okay? Just that everything will be okay. Yeah. What else? She's pretty perfect, right? It's not her fault. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. Yeah. So we talked a little earlier about uh, the division of religion and with um, family. How's she doing with that? What does she have to say? She doesn't like it. She thinks it's messed up. Yeah. religion doesn't matter. It's not a right or wrong way. There's not a right or wrong way. It's just what works for you. Perfect. Perfect. How's she doing? Better. Okay. All right. What else does she need? Reassurance? Reassurance That she's capable to just do her, or whatever that is. Yeah. She's here for a reason. Yeah. Well, it's not anybody else's reason. Yeah. Yes. be honest. We don't need to lie or hide. Just say what it is. Because it doesn't matter. <coughs> Better than she was, but not there. say no wonder we act the way we do because she portrays a certain way what could be different I 
needs to be unconditional love. Can you love her unconditionally? I want to. Can you love her unconditionally? Yes. Can you look in her eyes and tell her how much you love her? Yes. Can you hold her? Yes. Tell her you're always going to take care of her. Always going to take care of you, Mom. What about the young you? Can you find your pulse there? Yes. Welcome home. Thank you. With your eyes closed. If you look back at the school, is she there anymore in the hall? No. Perfect. And what do you feel right now when you think about that? Relieved. Ha, 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 ha. 
we just dismantled a tiny one where that version of her has been trapped in that hallway, right, since the beginning of time, right, since the beginning of, and, uh, you know, had we not gotten it, she'd be trapped there through lifetimes. What? Do you want to share what that was like for you? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, first, I just a, a real story to get to it. Sue worked on me the other day, and... Um, I'm gonna get emotional, but it's not because I'm sad. Right, okay. It's just moving. Go for it. We get it. It's just moving moving out. Um, <laughs> and we were doing some stuff, and Sherry's name popped up, and I felt it too. But well, I've been here, I've been a little about skeptical, but I didn't want to like, oh, we're gonna do this. I just wanted to observe and be pulled wherever I was supposed to. So last night, before I went to bed, I ran into her and I said, hey, if you still want to play in the morning, I'm open, but if not, it's okay. But then she found me this morning and asked a few questions and it brought stuff up. And when she said, are you ready to let that go? I said, yes, please, because I'm done. I just want to be done with this shit. So it's something, I'm 29 now, so I've been dealing with it for at least 10 plus years. And it, I've let it hold me back. It's not some crazy, horrible torture experience, but for me, it meant something, it hurt something, and it's stopped me, and I always tell me, oh, I'm fine, you guys can do whatever, I'm over it, I don't care. But obviously I do, because anytime anything that involves marriage, family, intimate relationships, ugh, it just triggers me. And so right now to feel so relieved and blank, I always say blank, but that's the most positive thing for me. Because now I can just paint whatever I want. Yeah, yeah. And it's my choice. And I'm super grateful for that. Me? Well, and you know, the thing is, is we don't have, just have one loop. Right? You know, we have many. And we have, have them through lifetimes. But when we can go in and, and pull the root, right, and, and, and dismantle that root and integrate it back in, that's the piece, right? Like all that information, she came in with information that she didn't know when she sat down here. And we need it, right? Because that's the thing. When we have trauma, we have all these pieces of amnesia, right? And it's like these black holes in our timelines that are just sucking energy. It's like, I felt like I was moving through life and my clients like soaker hoses, right? Just like trickling out our energy all the time, just leaking out all the time, right? Where when we can put ourselves back together, put our psyche back together, right? One thing I really find with people is they start looking different very quickly, right? Because they're, they're starting to have dimension, right? They're moving into wholeness. The wholeness has been a, a, a piece that we've talked about a lot. I know she was mentioning in it, I was sitting there going, wow, wholeness, right? Which is different than being healthy. It's different. Our bodies can be healthy while our minds are still very sick, right? We can we can be fractured and still have a, a semblance of health. But one thing about this, it's not coping. Right? I was so frustrated through my lifetime that I was <coughs> told that I was cool, I was fine because I could function. Right. Functioning is not living. Coping is not living. Managing is not living, right? When we can actually put ourselves back together, I always think of like an egg, right? And the Humpty Dumpty thing, right? When our, when, when our field is solid and we're whole, nothing can come in to contaminate the yolk, right? So we can be present with what is truly there. A person with PTSD can't be present. They can't be fully present. So as I was studying, you know, it was like, okay, I have all this information. Like, I could be up on the platform with Chopra teaching that. Didn't matter when I was triggered. Because that program that was running, right, only contained what I knew at that time. Right? So if I was five, you know, often, like, when you see people acting out, it's like, oh, how old are you, five? Right. Let's go. Let's get that five-year-old and bring him home. Right? Because 
that's what's happening, right? You know. But the one thing that I really found in my in my learning, right? Like I was in therapy for 30 years, like a string of prescriptions, like you know, I had 11 prescriptions. And um, my final psychiatrist looked at me and he said, you know, Sherry, you can be sitting where I am, ironically. And he said, you know, but what I can say to you is you're not in there. You're not in there. I don't know where you are, and I don't know how to help you. Right? So that took me on this whole journey. So probably about five years later, I'm sitting in an astral class, and they're traveling us, and I'm feeling nothing, which was interesting because you know I'm pretty psychic right so I'm feeling nothing until they brought me back oh wow right and I was like interesting I don't think I've ever looked out of my eyes because my first trauma I was six months old my father almost killed me when I was six months old so you know and I remember that watching it from above you know, so being able to be completely in and looking out of our eyeballs and realizing that that is an amazing superpower to be able to, when you think about it, all right, she just quantum jumped, right? She just time traveled and she just dismantled a time loop in a 10 minute period, 12 minutes, right? She started out at a, a 15 on that incident, right, emotionally. And where would you label it now? Like a one or a two. Usually people add a two, which is, you know, you don't want to take everything away from it because you don't want to repeat it. You don't want it to completely blend in, but it does drop into the fabric of life, right? These loops are like snacks, right? Like if you've got a, a sweater that's got loops all over it, you're snagging it all the time, right? And when everything's snagged, it's all bunched together. So there's no no space between today and 40 years ago. Mm. Wow. Right? Because your timeline is just like a walk, right? So when we can start moving these loops out and spreading it out, you know, then we have space to breathe. Do you feel like you have space? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right? So when we when we have these black holes in our in our memory, right? That we often feel so haunted. Well, who's haunting us but us, right? Those versions of us want to be whole. Like, they want to come back. They're tired of being trapped there. Sometimes we'll go back into the space, and those kids are so mad. And you know who they're mad at? Us. Like, you forgot me. You left me trapped in Groundhog Day for 30 years, living the same thing over and over. <laughs> I have a question. I don't remember anything before I was maybe seven. So does that mean that I just disassociated? Probably. Yeah. Yes. And, and here I am with my granddaughter, and I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm doing all this stuff with her. We're having her. She's not going to remember any of this. <laughs> but it's me. Just sure. I'm not. When we talked, I love like one of the new ideas was the idea of a magical person and I didn't even understand what you were saying. I want you to share it with everybody. Okay. Because I love that compared to like somebody that's not that magical, that ha doesn't get PTSD. Right, what I've realized is that, you know, not every human that experiences trauma ends up with PTSD. But the people that do end up with PTSD are extraordinarily magical people. Because they're already astral traveling, right? They're already creating time loops, they're, they're reality hopping. Like, and, and all of, the reason why they're having so much trouble understanding what to do with it is because it's muggles trying to figure it out. 